The history of uh, Samos is deeply tied up with the history of um, Mesa. Marine Innovation South Australia was set up uh, some years ago and I was in fact turned out to be the uh, luckiest first appointment. And in the first year that I was here, uh, IMOS, the Integrated Marine Observing System, was also announced. So we had funding for both two things, one for salaries through MISA and two for equipment, staff, vessel time. This funding, which has um, been allocated an additional $50 million in the last May budget, is enabling us in South Australia to build a uh, Southern Australian Integrated Marine Observing System. This is in collaboration with colleagues from Flinders University and Saudi Aquatic Sciences and supported through MESA to undertake what is, without doubt, Australia's biggest venture in marine research. The purpose of this observing system is to, in fact, monitor and determine the nature of the boundary currents, how they can connect to El Nino events in the Pacific, how they connect to the Lewin current, the East Australian current, and in particular, the focus here is about fisheries, it's about recreation, it's about the use of our coastal resources, is to try and understand how these nutrients are upwelled onto the shelf and into the coastal zones, how those uh, planktonic systems uh, work, if you like, in conjunction with viruses and bacteria, which can control them. Since August uh, 2008, we've been conducting monthly field surveys, uh, sending out the Nagera, Sardi's research vessel, and a crew of about four scientific uh, personnel. Uh, they're out there for about five or six days uh, sampling the water column. At the same time, the uh, crew put out uh, moorings. These moorings, which uh, sit underneath the ocean near the sea floor, look up and measure uh, ocean currents. Again, temperature, salinity, turbidity, other sorts of variables. They're left out there for months at a time and then uh, the guys go back out and uh, recollect those and download the data. A second fantastic uh, observing system that we'll be taking advantage of are things called sea gliders. These sea gliders are essentially robots without motors, but what they do is change their buoyancy by sucking in a little bit of seawater and squirting it back out. They change their buoyancy so they sink, they've got wings so they glide to the bottom, set a little acoustic pulse to determine how close to the bottom they then squirt some water out, soar back up to the top taking measurements as they go and as they come to the surface, they'll say, hello satellite, here's the data, where do you want me to go to next? And we can program those gliders to go where we want through our colleagues at the um, University of West Australia. There's a, an adjunct to the data that we get. Uh, Simon Goldsworthy at Saudi Aquatic Sciences has been tagging sea lions and they, it turns out, provide quite unique and fantastic uh, instrument platforms. They carry the CTD tags with them, which report back to satellite when they come to the surface but also to report the position, which is of interest in itself because it tells you where they feed, how often they feed, how long they dive for. And of course, the seals tend to go where the food is, unlike the mechanical gliders, which simply go where we tell them. The uh, tagged sea lions provide another uh, smarter platform because the seals are telling us we're going here to feed, there must be something happening there. So it's giving us an indication of where there is biological activity. And that often happens to be at the heads of canyons, um, and other well-known upwelling spots. We have a, an instrument called an HF ocean radar system. Uh, this sort of leading edge technology provides over the horizon estimates of surface currents, waves, and for measuring waves, you can actually back in first surface winds. What the radar do is they send out high frequency pulses, which bounce off surface waves in the ocean. It turns out we know how quickly those patterns of surface wave move through the ocean. Thus, given that, we can then determine if there's a background current moving towards us or away from us. So what a single radar installation will tell us is what the speed is of the water, but it actually won't tell us a vector. We need another set of um, HF radar systems to do that, and that's why we have another system on the York Peninsula. The intersection of the, those two systems then gives us what's called a vector, that is a direction and a speed. These data between Kangaroo Island and um, the Air Peninsula will assist the Bureau of Meteorology in determining severe weather events such as uh, fronts coming through during the bushfire season where it's very important to know the angle of the front and the intensity of the front. So the observing systems of the HF radar don't just benefit us scientifically by telling us about surface currents, they also have these add-on um, practical applications, another one being search and rescue. These data from the HF radar will be streamed live to the web so you're looking at 15 minute old 
currents, so search and rescue, pollution prediction. If you're a skipper with a, uh, a boat and you want to get from A to B, and you want to do it in the cheapest and fastest possible manner, then what you can do is look at those data, if you can get them on the web on your boat, and then essentially surf the currents and you get back to where you want quicker than otherwise. So optimal use of ship time through knowledge of ocean currents can cut greenhouse gas emissions, save time, save money. Some years down the track we'd be looking to have a nowcast model of ocean currents and at that stage we'd also be hoping to assimilate the data streams as they come in. One of the big um, issues with IMOS is there's a great keenness to in fact have live data streams and that's for this very reason assimilating data so people can use it in their numerical models but also so people have data in real time when they're facing real decisions out there at sea. So those technologies, HF radar, standard technologies such as moorings, field surveys, are going to really allow us here in South Australia to build one of the best observing systems. Couple that with the numerical model development that we're doing, these are ocean models, uh, computer models of the ocean circulation, will give us a world-class facility in terms of predicting and where ocean water goes, what nutrients it carries, and ultimately how it affects the biological systems and our fisheries. <laughs>